Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Well, this is the jungle that's in the lean-to now. And it even smells like a jungle in here. I've got the African blue basil that I dug up. It's, it's already too hot in it. The, you know, the soil is cold and then it gets really warm in here during the daytime. Uh, I've got the citrus in here. I've got the lemongrass right there. And I think, what is that again? I keep on forgetting. Speaking of labels, I'm finally uh, doing what I've been meaning to do, and I'm always the, uh, the ultimate in procrastination. I've got the labels here for the Maltese Beauty. I already put on the label for, although I have the original label for the Italian 258 stuck in the pot there. I put another one of these metal labels on. But it can hear me squeeze by this lemongrass. Got the citrus on this side. But uh, I knew it was going to happen. Uh, I brought in the fig trees that were over in the greenhouse. And even though I took off all the split figs, I brought in fruit flies. So I get fruit flies in here. And uh, I did have uh, uncontaminated figs in here. I mean, they could split and I had no problem because there were no fruit flies in here but now even those are a problem because they're attracting the fruit flies and I don't know what the um, cycle time is for the life cycle of a fruit fly but I think they're pretty quick I remember biology experiments where we created this this mush mixture and put them in test tubes and started off with some uh, fruit fly maggots I think and then in no time whatsoever had fruit flies and isn't it remember that we used to do those uh, I think that's a standard experiment, something about the eyes, the eyes and the wings or something like that. So they pass on genetics, they, they breed so quickly you're able to look at some genetic traits. But yeah, um, it's, here's the side with the, the fig trees. Um, they're all in here and hardly any room to walk. I'm looking to get, I did something repeatedly I do this. Uh, you don't. You want to ignore the fact that uh, there are some things that you just can't do anymore. So, I have one of those little giant uh, ladders, and I don't know. I could throw it on a scale. That there, there may be. There might be over fifty pounds. But whatever I've done in my back, I, I imagine that I've squished one of the discs on one side, though, because it depends on how I'm leaning. But when I carry that little ladder around, uh, that's the perfect, um, how to describe it, it's, it's the perfect scenario for squashing or compressing my back. So I feel great when I'm lifting it around, no problem, but the next day I can't get out of bed. And the next day it's even worse and uh, it takes a while for that to become uncompressed so it's when I lift stuff and I keep my oddly enough my back completely straight and on either my I think it's my my right I don't know my right to my left side I, I don't know if I'm carrying it I put my arms underneath one of the runs and I carry the ladder uh, on the side of me uh, and I have my back straight that compresses my back so the reason I mention that is my figs are just they're getting to be that uh, you know they're so the pots here are so big that uh, I keep on contemplating having to reduce or get rid of the figs completely. So geez, you know you have so much time invested in these. I mean some of these I've had longer than ten years, but um, yeah, I don't know. It, my back feels better today, but, you know, I couldn't even, I was bringing some watermelons in, and I couldn't even carry like a 10-pound watermelon. <laughs> so, um, this here is a UC Davis Col de Dame Blanc. It gets, it's just loaded. Oh, there's one that I missed. It has a green fig, but it's a red interior, and it's just a beautiful fig. Uh, but it leaves me hanging every year with just a ton. You can see here where I've 
broken off all the figs in the middle of the night trying to scramble to get these figs in which you know I've got the the two-wheel hand cart and my back is killing me and I want to do further injury to my back and um, then we didn't end we ended up not getting to freeze that night so it's really windy today it's supposed to go down to 30 degrees uh, tonight but um, yeah so you know it, the, the UC Davis you can't get anymore so but I just recently put it in this large pot but it, this seems to be even a, a, a late a ripening fig, a later ripening fig than black Madeira. So, and I had this with um, the most sun. It, I had it optimized to get the most sun for this year, and it just doesn't produce for me. You know, I don't grow coconut trees up here in New England. You know, you have to really, what's it, uh, Kalinius would say, and a man's got to know his limitations. That Clint Eastwood movie? Yeah, so uh, I'll start taking some cuttings off of, looks like this is just starting to lignify this branch here. But maybe the Col de Dame Blanc, I gotta get rid of. Um, here's the two black Madeiras that officially I never kept track of from day one. Um, and I surmise by the end result which is which, so you can see here, uh, this here is, uh, I'm thinking this is the Black Madeira UC Davis, and it has some figs that are starting to ripen, um, but they don't get the size um, as the Encanto Farm strain that I purchased, I think you can still get, I don't know what the big deal is because I'm pretty sure you can still get those cuttings when they're available from Encanto Farms, but those are the ones from uh, KK. And so, I mean, I think this tree this year, I don't think it actually had, I'm, th I'm wondering, occasionally one will um, ripen and become like the size of the ones that you you get off of the uh, Encanto farm strain but this one here see I just put this is uh, black Madeira this goes back 2010 so um, you know I've had that for eight years maybe nine going on nine and I this one here is the one that produces like clockwork produces those nice air layers and I've, I've, I've shown we've seen the the figs that come off of this and it's the classic black Madeira fig the large dark black Madeira with the just see uh, with the um, syrup inside a little bit of a cavity and just filled with syrup very sweet nice fig uh, again, this is the UC Davis, and you can see them, you know, they're just starting to ripen here in the lean-to, although I did have them ripen outside, but we just had a ton of rain, and then the cooler temperatures just usher in. I think that's when uh, this particular strain of uh, fruit flies uh, become uh, visible. Maybe it's because of... Uh, other fruit that ripens around that, maybe apples and pears, but up in here in up New England, you don't see them during the summer. It's just in the fall, the cooler temperatures get ushered in, that we have these uh, fruit flies, the standard fruit flies that you see. So here's a fig that has fallen off of a tree here. And um, yeah, what did I just do with the label? I was talking about the label. Um, I had the label in my hand. See that? I already lost the label. I left it on the plate here. I lost my train of thought. So here's the Maltese Beauty. And um, here is the Maltese Beauty right here. And you can see, you see the fruit fly? This one here is split. It's a pretty small eye on this fig here. But this here is split. 
it's just all the fruit flies are going to it. Cut that off, break that off. It has the white sap there, although you know it looks good inside. Uh, but the sugars don't develop in these cooler temperatures. The lower sun intensity. Um, that one there, that fig tree is just loaded with figs. Look at all the figs just in that one branch there. There's one that is just hanging. It's a little bit smaller. It actually has some honey uh, on the side there. I thought that was insect. That's not an insect. But I was, I was thinking actually that this was the UC Davis variety, but now I'm wondering because I see a fig right there that's pretty good size. I'm going to cut this open for a second. Yeah, so there's the interior of that one. That looks pretty good. Smells a little No, that's actually good. Hmm. That was a surprise. Yeah, so what did I do with that one? Okay, so I've been throwing these on the compost pile, but I've been burying them because um, I throw them on the compost pile. I don't want to teach squirrels um, what these are. I haven't did not notice any squirrels or any birds for that matter on any of my fig trees. Uh, here is let's see. I've got I've got leaves falling off. Um, this is the Italian 258. I've always had the original label. You can see here I've had this since 2015. I'm a reputable uh, fig grower. And this is the one that I mistakenly thought was the um, Black Madeira in a video. But what happened was I had a, a cutting that really didn't take when I removed it in the fall. And when I took it out of the container, I found out it only had like one two roots on it so I just stuck it in some soil and the following spring this I think was this this spring here it took off uh, as soon as the temperature started warming up so now to make sure this uh, what did I say yeah this is the Maltese Beauty uh, CM 155 2013 yeah, so the reason I thought this was the UC Davis because uh, other than that other tree that the larger, the old, two oldest black Madeiras that I have, they tend to seem to, the UC Davis tend to be like these bush-shaped smaller trees. Um, here's, a, here's a fig here. Take that, that, yeah, that just fell off. So you can see this Pretty small eye, it does have the sap, uh, white latex coming out. Let me cut that one open. Yeah, you can see, so you can see that one. There's no way, there's actually no opening, no access to that for fruit flies. Could have left that on there. But let me give this one a try. I don't know if it's my paranoia. It just, that one there doesn't taste that good. I mean, it looks great, but yeah, that one didn't, the sweetness wasn't, I thought it was going to be like sour. Um, yeah, it's sort of raw flavor to it. So that was a kind of a dud. But here, up here, in the canopy here, I have, oh, I can see fruit flies hang. So this, this is just a breeding ground for fruit flies now. This is the I-258. That's a shame. 
So this one's split. But whoa, look at the darkness in there. Whoa. Yeah, it's like the perfect laboratory for fruit flies. But look at that. There's probably... I don't think they've been in there long. I just brought these in a couple of days ago, but... I was going to say there's probably eggs in there, but... Yeah. Yeah, these... These... I, these, um... I-258s are pretty big. This one looks good. It's got some fig honey there coming out of the eye. And it doesn't turn completely black. It has this sort of tannish color on one side where the sun doesn't hit it. But, yeah, those... Let's cut that one open. All right, let's take a look. Ooh, okay. Italian 258. Look at the puddle there of syrup. So, yeah, there's no way they'd have to just lay it, the eggs there and then when they hatch they would burrow, I would imagine, into the, um, eat their way into the fig, but that looks pretty good. I'll give that a try. It's, that's good. It's okay. Like I said, I don't know, the cooler temperatures, the lower sun intensity, they're just not what you get when you have those sporadic uh, early ripening ones um, in the heat of the summer. So... Hmm. I know somebody's going to leave a comment saying those are worms crawling around. No, they're not. Those are, that's the interior uh, structure of the fig. You can tell what happens is when you have an outside, well, you can have it just with spores also, but when you have an insect going in there, they're bringing stuff with them, and when stuff starts eating, um, it starts liquefying the interior of the fig, so... Instead of having some syrup come out of the eye that coagulates and it's sort of uh, like uh, amber, like, um, you know, pine sap, uh, a liquid, you'll see this liquid juice dripping down onto tables or wherever the, you know, onto branches if there's a branch underneath. And that's, that's a, a soured, infected fig that's got... A lot of stuff going on there, and um, it's it's just dissolving, and it's a it's a clear it's not clear it's a it's a runny more liquidy uh, substance fluid that comes out of the eye, and you, if you go to try that, you know, take a look at it with the micro with a magnifying glass, and uh, you're going to see things crawling around that. I'm not going to make that. It's going to be sour too. You'll smell it. It's a sweet, sour smell to it. But no, not this one. This is this is a good fig. Um, I mean, this is the end of October we're getting into. So if this was during the heat of the summer, it would have been unbelievable. But it's it's still good. Italian 258. That's a keeper. So, yeah, so if I'm putting all this energy into a fig, I gotta have a payoff, right? I have to have something. Italian 258 is producing a nice fig for me. This Maltese Beauty. Like I said, I don't know. I got rid of the mother plant because it really wasn't producing for me. So, this is an air layer. So, essentially, you know, this is as old as the mother tree. 
Um, so maybe I just didn't wait long enough, because <laughs> look, look at all the figs that it's leaving me here. So, um, and just on this small branch here, the shoot that came up off the side. Um, yeah, for some reason it's just really producing now. I've got the two Ashia Blacks, which, you know, really you hold on to because it's, uh, you know, it's it's hard to come across. You can't get it from UC Davis, another variety you can't get from UC Davis. And one of the drawbacks is the Fig Mosaic Virus. If this was, if this did not have, or a Fig Mosaic Virus did not exist, this would be an unbelievable fig. Uh, and also it probably produces more... Um, you know, in southern climate instead of here in New England. So I've got two of these now um, that I've kept track of from day one from cuttings from UC Davis when they were uh, available. They're no longer available, so I might get rid of one of these again. It's just becoming too much to lug these around. Uh, so I'll be taking cuttings from, I think this is, this is the one, what's the date on this one? This one here is 2013, and the one over here is 2010. Oh, okay, yeah, that's the one that, all right, yeah, this is the one that had the die back, so another, another one that I've had for eight years. So, you know, I guess maybe another way is just to keep on making cuttings and keeping plants that are small like this and produce a couple of figs um, that, you know, when they're a couple of years old and keep them this size. But, uh, yeah, I've got a bunch of these. Here's a black Madeira from 2012, um, you know. It's manageable in a white bucket like this, but need to cut back on some of this. And right behind me is the Zingarella. There's a nice air layer possibility for next year. It's just has a bunch of, it's got a main trunk and then these little bunch of branches off of the top here. Not much material I can take off of that without sacrificing next year's fig production. But yeah, so you know, it's just becoming, it gets to a point where you have to make some decisions here. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's the figs, that's where they are right now inside the lean to. Uh, the sun just went behind the clouds and I notice really quickly the temperature change in the lean-to. So let me take those figs and throw them on the compost heap and at least starve the or break the cycle of, of these fruit flies and lo and behold I still haven't put the tag on the Maltese Beauty. All right, so that's done. Got those two tagged and won't have that confusion anymore. I have to go back occasionally to older videos to see what was what. So this is New England Gardening in the lean to squeezing around the plants that are in here. Um, I think I definitely I'd have to get rid of the the banana plant and the babaco. So this is New England Gardening trying to squeeze around the plants here in the lean-to. Uh, thanks for watching. And I mentioned it was really windy today too.